Today I'm going to introduce you to a tool called the Hypothesis Tree. The Hypothesis Tree is a really useful tool to help people on a project organise their thoughts. It also helps to highlight gaps in knowledge. It's been brought to you by 2020 Delivery Academy and is part of a course. If you'd like to see more of our lessons, click on the link now. It's a fictional story, but it's based on many real project experiences. It's a universal tool that's used in the public and private sector, and will give you a chance at the end to have a go at using this tool yourself. So that's the context. Here's the case. Let me introduce you to Mary. Mary works for the Environment Department, and she's part of a large project team that's been tasked by the minister to look at ways to reduce carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gas emissions. Once the team has disaggregated the problem and conducted some analysis, the tool, the hypothesis tree, is really useful for clarifying thinking, debunking myths, and synthesizing recommendations. This is what it looks like. It starts with the answer or recommendation, actually the hypothesis that the team has come up with, and then breaks it down into branches, hence where the name hypothesis tree comes from. Between each of the levels, you ask why. And in asking why, you provide supporting information for the branch that is above. How does it work? Well, ideas at any level in the pyramid must always be summaries of the ideas grouped below. Ideas in each grouping must always be the same kind of idea. And ideas in each grouping must always be logically ordered. Let's have a look at an example of this. My hypothesis in the top box is that I need to buy more cornflakes. Why do I believe this? Well, I'd like a bowl of cornflakes. A bowl of cornflakes requires cornflakes. And there are no cornflakes in the house. What's the supporting evidence for the fact that I would like a bowl of cornflakes? Well, there's two things. I'm hungry and also I only eat cornflakes. I don't need any supporting information for the fact that a bowl of cornflakes requires a bowl of cornflakes. However, I do need some evidence for the fact that there are no cornflakes in the house. How do I know this? Well, there are no cornflakes in the kitchen, there are no cornflakes in the pantry, there is a cornflakes carton in the bin, and there's a note on the table saying, buy cornflakes. Great. I can also use the hypothesis tree to test and confirm my hypothesis. As you can see from all the supporting information at the bottom, it is true that there are no cornflakes in the house. It's also true that a bowl of cornflakes requires a bowl of cornflakes. But unfortunately, my hypothesis falls down on the fact that I'm not hungry because I've just had my lunch. This is really useful at this stage in the project because you can use it to refine your hypotheses. You might modify the hypothesis here to say, I would need to buy more cornflakes if I were hungry. Let's go back to our case with Mary. So as we know, the Environment Department has set a large project team to look at reducing emissions. They're looking at four areas, manufacturing, housing, agriculture and transport. Mary's project team has been asked to look at housing specifically. And they had a really, really interesting pilot that's been looking at ways that the houses can be made more green and energy efficient. Not quite like this, but you get the general idea. So they come up with a hypothesis that by offering support to householders to help them take action to reduce their carbon footprint, the government could save an additional 1 million tonnes of carbon within 10 years. Why do they believe that? Well, there's three key supporting pieces of information. Firstly, there are significant potential CO2 savings, more than 1 million tonnes of carbon per annum to be made in households. And secondly, householders face barriers hindering them from installing low carbon measures. And thirdly, the government could support householders overcome these barriers, saving 1 million tonnes of carbon within 10 years. Why do they believe their first piece of evidence? Well, emissions from the household sector contribute a significant proportion to the total, approximately 100 million tonnes, and also there are many cost-effective measures available that householders can install to reduce their carbon impact. Why do they believe the second piece of supporting information? Well, this is because low carbon measures are costly and many householders have low levels of disposable income. And there is also currently a lack of suppliers with the skills and resources to deliver low carbon measures. 
Why do they believe that the government can support householders to overcome these barriers? Well, they did a pilot which showed that if they scaled it up, they could achieve 1.2 million tonnes of carbon savings within 10 years. The government has the skills and capabilities to scale up the pilot to the whole population. However, they hadn't yet confirmed with the Treasury whether there was funding available. If the final point of their hypothesis is true, and there is funding, then their high-level hypothesis will be true, and they could use this project to start delivering those carbon savings. If the last point on their hypothesis tree is false, then their high-level hypothesis will be false too. As you can see, this is a really useful tool to des for deciding where they should prioritise their efforts in their project. It also helps to clarify thinking and debunk myths. So that's the case. If you'd like to have a go at using this tool yourself, hit pause on the video in a moment. Think of a hypothesis that you have, what's either part of your organisation or your home or your work or something in the news. Think about the different supporting information that adds up to your high-level hypothesis. Use the three points on the right to help build your hypothesis tree. Thanks for watching. If you found this lesson useful, please leave your feedback below.